In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how I'm going to create these rings that I've embellished with the lovely microfaceted uh, moonstone. It's um, it's an absolutely gorgeous stone, and it gives it such a lovely twinkle. Um, and this kit with all the opal and the moonstone, um, I asked everybody at home what they thought of the kit and what it inspired, and um, what thoughts it inspired. And everybody said oceanic, um, beachy. Um, anything to do with the ocean and the seas, really cliff faces, etc. And so um, what I went with was a sort of sea foam um, motif. So, um, and it, it works beautifully with the sun, with the moonstone there. So I've got an asymmetric design with this um, patterning here, and this is created using a, a four different size loops of wire, and then um, set with the moonstone around the edge. So I'm gonna show you how to create these elements and then join them together. So first you will need, um, in terms of tools, you'll need some either some bail makers or some objects like um, a marker pen or um, a lipstick or a nail polish or something. But we want two or three different sizes to work our wire around to make different size loops. In this one, I've used the larger and the middle size on these larger step bail makers. Um, so we'll also go into use our flush cutter pliers and our flat nose pliers for helping us finish the tips of the wire etc. Materials really simple we're going to need a 0.4 millimeter uh, wire and a 0.8 millimeter wire. So first I'm going to show you how to create these sort of little loops that we're going to work onto. So first off I'm going to take my 0.8 mil wire and I'm going to trim off any ragged edges. Okay it's just going to make life easier leaving it on the reel and I'm going to pop it into um, whichever size you're going to work with first. So I'm going to go with a large one. I'm going to trap that into the jaws, the end into the jaws of the pliers, and I'm going to start to turn um, the pliers around and then release the grip, hold on at a different point and turn again and then keep doing this. Now you can make one at a time if you want, but I prefer to make a few at a time. So it's a lot like making jump rings. Um, each of the little components is going to need two entire wraps around. So if we want to make two or three, we want to make sure we multiply that by um, two or three. So if I want two, I'm going to do four complete loops around. Okay, and always go a little bit over just in case you get a bit of um, waste. And also because there's a bit of a spring. So when you take it from the mandrel, you'll notice actually there that the bigger the mandrel, the more the spring and there is. You can see it's actually larger than the mandrel to start with. Okay, so always go just a little bit over where you need. And then I'm gonna cut these like I would jump rings, so just get rid of that wire. So here's the end. And if I was cutting a jump ring, I would cut the next loop along, but because I'm cutting these little components, I'm gonna skip that one and cut the one um, after it. So I end up with two rings with the ends sort of meeting like they would with a jump ring. So it's a lot like a key ring actually. And then if I cut that one, I've got another component too. Okay, so I'd make four of these. So two smaller ones and two larger ones for the design I did. And then we're going to um, set the moonstone, uh, moonstone all the way around the edge. So I'm gonna need 0.4 wire for that. And I'm gonna use about half a meter of the 0.4 wire. That will give me plenty to go around and also give me a few tails at the end so I can sort of stitch them together to create the um, connector element. So we want to steer clear of the join to start with. Um, uh, so I'm going to come along, along um, some way from that join, so maybe a centimetre or so, and I'm going to attach in my wire. I'm going to leave a nice long tail because that will help um, with the tying in and stitching the components together. So first things first, just wrap around the two wires together, one nice tight wrap around, okay? And pull that nice and tight. And then we're gonna start adding the moonstone. So before we add a moonstone, if I just added the moonstone straight on, what would happen is the moonstone would sit here. Um, let me show you actually, I'm gonna grab one of these moonstones, thread it onto the wire. If I was to just put that there and let it sit, down when I pull the wire around what's going to happen is it's just going to 
it's going to behave actually and do what it's supposed to do just because I'm showing you what, what what tends to happen is it will sit off to one side so to make sure that they all sit on the outside of this ring I'm just going to before I let that move so drop straight down I'm just going to put my nail in the way and just give it a bend so that it just sits onto the double layer of the wire rather than to one side of it and then hold that in place while I take the wire through the loop pull it all the way through and back out and then I'm going to wrap around one more time in between each one that I thread on so just wrapping around okay bringing it up to that point and then again remember to put that your fingernail just in just to give it a little kink off to the side so that the gemstone sits on the outside of the ring um, each time rather than in the middle now um, one thing that would be helpful at home for you is actually if you're going to do this design try and use a dark background um, or a dark mat to put your beads onto it's much easier to see the drill hole mine are on a white mat here and it's um, tricky to see where that drill hole is in, against all that sparkle of the moonstone okay so sitting on to the outside pulling that wire around wrapping around one entire wrap before we then put the next on so put your finger in place, give it a pinch so that it's the, the bead sits where you want it to. And, and let the bead drop down into position. Again, you can pinch the other side as well if you feel you need to. And put the wire through the loop. Pull it through. Wrap all the way around without a bead. And back out to the outside and then put that kink in again now what you'll find is um, because the wire is um, you've got this double thickness of the wire around this ring what you'll find is they'll start to sort of twist into one another and sit on top of one another rather than parallel so what you'll need to do every now and again take your flat nose pliers and just bite down in between the gemstones just to help it sit parallel as you go through Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on going around and then when I get to the point where the wires join, I'm going to come back to you and we can um, look at how to, how to sort of bridge that join and also how to connect the one end to the other so it looks seamless. Okay. Okay, so I've wrapped almost all the way around and as you can see here, I am at the point now where the two ends of wire are sort of coming together just there so I'm about to wrap over those two points so what we want to do is what you'll find is as you're wrapping and um, they'll start to come apart so the, the the ring then gets a little bit larger so what you want to do is hold on to the one side and just sort of wiggle it and sort of press along the edges with your finger as you do that just to help them come back together and we want them to just slightly and um, slightly overlap or at least be level with one another before we carry on any further and then we're going to carry on wrapping so we're almost just going to try and ignore that it's there um, um but at the same time we're going to try not to just wrap around just one wire on its own um, and that's why we want that slight overlap um, because otherwise you end up with a weak spot um, in your wire and also it actually is quite visible in the design if they don't, if they don't um, sort of marry up so you can see here it's gone around the two wires there and then what we're going to do is sort of come to the outside of that wire where it just sort of skirts around the very tip of that wire there and then when we put the next one on we should be then onto this two and um, so we're just going to just wrap over that as carefully as we can and um, but that making sure that they are not sort of there's not a gap is the main point is the main thing to look out for so here I'm about to put probably the last the last gemstone in to this ring to complete it so at this point I've got this tail wire here and this tail wire here and we're wrapping around in one direction all the way around so what should happen is when we wrap into each into the next one they should sort of wrap seamlessly into one another um, and that's going to help when we come to joining two, two circles together as well. I'm just going to pop the last gemstone in and show you how to overlap the wires so that it is nice and seamless. So there is my um, last bead going into place. 
and make sure that this wire, this tail wire is to this side of it and then wrap down around uh, just as we would before but making sure that you're going in between the wraps from the last one. So you can see how that will just sit in between and then we're just going to con continue around a few more um, following the wraps um, that have already been before. And then this tail wire we can do the same so we can follow the wraps around in between and then that one there is then ready to use to sort of stitch stitch these little circles together so I've got a little king and cut that off okay so don't worry about the position of these just yet I would make up all your components and then sort of sit them together to see where they sit so I've got another one here and what I've done in mine is I've got my two larger ones sort of at the bottom and then they're linked together by two smaller ones and they're sort of higgledy piggledy so um to do this all we need to do is so if we if we take that same principle we're going to lay the smaller on top of the larger one and just position it and see where it intersects so here if i wanted it to go here um, I want to just bring that wire, this tail wire, around one more time just to bring it into the right position um, so that it is going to, it's maybe twice just to come the other side of that bead um, and pop it onto the frame again. And you want these wires to intersect the frame. So this wire here is where it wraps and crosses with this one and this one wraps and crosses with this one. So all we're going to do is take the wire on that one and make sure that we catch the wire at the bottom the ring at the bottom so we're going to wrap around that and if you remember if we it's important that we remember the direction that these wires are wrapping around so they're all wrapping in the same direction so if i catch this this one here and bring it through the loop if i wrap in the same direction I can hide that wire in between the wraps on this loop, if that makes sense. So if I bring the wire around, I should be traveling in the same direction. So if you're unsure, just have a check which way around that wire is going. So it is wrapping around that way. So if I keep going with this, it should just sit neatly in between the wraps that are already there on that that sort of hoop at the bottom okay so that one should sit and then come around and through and you can keep going until you sit you feel it's very secure okay so that one for me feels nice and secure now so i just wrap it around there and then i will trim that tail wire off always trimming so that it's sort of on the inside of the design rather than on the front or the back so give that a pinch with your pliers to make sure it's all tucked away and then we can do the same with this wire okay so that one make sure that it's intersecting the frame where you want it to just here and then again we're just going to wrap around in the direction of the weave underneath so that the wires just sit in um, almost invisible just wrapping through and through again three or four times around should be plenty but if you want to do more you can you can just keep going with it if you want because if you keep going what will happen is um before we had um, a bead a wrap bead a wrap bead a wrap and it goes in that pattern all the way around but when you course join them together you end up with a bead two wraps a bead two wraps um, and so you might want to continue that pattern because um, if you you know if you like it to, to look even all the way then you might want to continue with that okay so that's these two joined together I'm just going to trim that off again and again give it a bit of a pinch with my flat nose pliers to make sure it's tucked away and nice and smooth and that's it really that's your components and you can put as many together as you like and um, you can vary the sizes as much as you like you know there's there's loads of opportunities from this point here but all I've done is added in 
um, a rosary link chain and just use this this little component um, as a connector here in an asymmetric design so this one sits off to the side and you've got just a rosary link chain that goes around the neckline okay i hope you've enjoyed that and i hope that's useful and i hope you find lots of uses for that little technique and i'd love to see them when you get time thanks bye